So let's introduce a new data set. That's ADE20K. It contains 150 stuff slash objects. Wait, sorry, Professor, I had, a, I had a question on the last slide. Okay. Um, so this, they just dropped this into like other networks we've seen uh, and they just replaced the upsampling, right? In, in all these comparisons. Yeah, up until this point is a pre-trained network on ImageNet, for instance. But then from this point on, uh, it's what you're going to learn. That's where the transfer learning is going. On. Okay, cool. So you transfer your learning up until this point, and then you let the network train the rest of it while fine-tuning these weights as well. But the big idea is these indices and how you upsample. It's different from the convolutions. Hey, thanks. Okay, perfect. So this new data set has a lot of stuff and objects. For, for instance, for comparison, Pascal VOC had 21 object categories. And they have a bunch of image level descriptors, like this is an airport terminal, this is a bedroom, etc. But let's look at the predictions of a fully convolutional network on this data set. This is the ground truth. And let's take a look at the mistakes that a fully connection that fully convolutional network is gonna make. This is a bolt. The ground truth is a bolt. The prediction of a fully convolutional network is a car, and that's a mismatch relationship. You're gonna have confusion among categories. That's a skyscraper, according to the ground truth. A fully convolutional network is making mistakes between the skyscraper and uh, building, and you can have inconspicuous classes. For instance, that's a pillow, the pillow, and uh, the fully convolutional network is not seeing the pillow. It's just seeing the entire thing as a bed. And what do you think the problem is with the network? Why is the network making this mistake? That's a bolt, but it's classifying it as a car. Any ideas? Maybe an uh, imbalance in the training classes? Uh, maybe, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Is it that the boat um, it, it requires information from elsewhere in the city? image like you would know it's a boat because there's water in this scene and if the network isn't um incorporating that knowledge then it's not gonna uh, know the significance of it as a boat versus a car yes perfect so that's a perfect answer the context matters the context of the image matters and the network is correctly identifying water here but then uh, for some reason it is thinking that a car can be sitting on water there are a couple of other answers from justice. For instance, our receptive field is small. That could also be an answer because the receptive field is going to correspond to your field of view and it's going to incorporate the context. So the context matters. Scale and location in the image. The scale matters also, but this boat has the same scale as it's, it's actually a big part of the network. It's actually a big part of the image. So it should be able to identify that. And, uh, so yes, and Jacob is saying it's not using the context around the boat. So the context matters. So how do you incorporate context information? One option was what we have been covering so far with atrus convolutions, because that's going to increase the field of view. The other one is pyramid pooling. So you take your image, you push it through your CNN, you get a bunch of feature maps. And previously what we were doing, we were just pulling everything to a single vector and then using that single vector of sample to give us the global information. What you can do now is divide your feature map into four components, for instance, and then pull per each uh, sub feature map. So you divide it into four, and then you pull the first one, you paste it here, you pull the second one, and this could be either average pooling or max pooling. You can then pull here, paste it here, etc. You can divide your input feature map into nine smaller regions, and then in each of those regions, you do a pooling, and you can do the same thing for a higher resolution uh, partition of your feature map. And then you do your pooling, then there is going to be a convolution here. That's just a one by one convolution. And that's going to take a high dimensional vector and make it low dimensional. So it's going to do a dimensionality reduction for us. 
to one by one convolutions, and then you're gonna stack them together. You're gonna copy what you had from your CNN, and then you do your convolution. So that's a way to give you global context information at multiple resolutions. And in terms of training this network, uh, again, you're gonna run into trouble when you sit behind your computer and try to train it. One way is to initialize better, one way is to do batch normalization, dropout, all sorts of techniques. And the other one is to have a new branch for your loss function. And then this loss function is gonna control the weights that are uh, deeper into your network. And then it's a matter of balancing the loss with a loss weight. For instance, you can have a weight of zero on loss two. It means that you're not gonna have this uh, auxiliary loss and that's gonna give you this accuracy, pixel accuracy and mean intersection over union. And you can actually find the best alpha. And apparently the best alpha for this data set, this network structure is gonna be 0.4. That's giving you the best result. And the way you determine alpha is using your validation data set. And then you can apply it to cityscapes. It's doing a pretty good job. You can apply it to Pascal VLC. It's doing a much better job compared to the baseline. The baseline is confusing parts of the cow for some other class, and it's missing some part of the table with the background, but this network is getting them correctly. So it's actually able to take care of uh, confusion in your categories. So now it's correctly classifying everything as a skyscraper. This is now a boat, and that's a pillow, and the context matters. And in terms of numbers, you can compare only one context, which is just having a one by one convolution here. Basically your bin size being one by one. So your entire feature map is gonna be your bin and then you do your pooling on that. Or you can have multiple of them. You can have one by one, two by two, three by three, six by six, et cetera. And up until this point, it's B1. So you only have one context, one global context. And uh, these are your results. And max pooling and average pooling are doing almost comparatively. You can use both of them. As soon as you introduce your context at different scales, it's gonna do a better job. And then this DR stands for dimensionality reduction. How important are these one by one convolution to reduce a dimension? And apparently they are really important, both computationally and also giving you better results, pixel accuracy and mean intersection over you. What is the message, the take home message from these sorts of papers is that what you see in terms of your models and the choice of the models is not, uh, is not by chance. The way you design your networks, there is a lot of intuition going behind it. It's not a black box. If one network is doing a better job than the other one, it's because they identify the problem in their data set and then they try to fix it. So these design choices are not random. These are smart choices. For instance, atlas convolutions. These are smart choices because you want to solve a problem with your network. You want to give it context. You want to give it a higher field of view. So no, these neural networks are not black boxes. There is a lot of intuition going behind them. Uh, any questions before I move to the next paper? So this, um, this diagram, I'm a... It seems that the height and width are a little like not drawn to scale, right? Because if I understand it correctly, that red, the sort of single uh, B1 should is the same height and width as, but they're all the same height and width. They're just split differently, right? Uh, no, what you get here are your results after the pooling. You create a bin. Basically, you put a grid on your original feature map, and then you pull per bin. You pull your first bin and put it here. But uh, in terms of resolution, you are correct. These don't have the same resolution. So you need to do an upsampling to be able to concatenate. Am I answering your question or? Yeah, I think that makes sense. So you, you upsample differently based on your bin size. Is that? Yes, exactly. Okay. Is so this? Go... Yes, go ahead. I was gonna ask, is this pyramid module, does this only exist at sort of like the bottom of the U, like only before we start upsampling or does this exist like further back in the network as well? Are there multiple? No, it's just uh, after your feature map. Up until this point, you take a VGT or mm -hmm. some other network that is already trained. 
but then you put this uh, pooling at the end. Okay. Before your up, up sampling and then concatenation and then another convolution to give you your final prediction. And then when they're up sampling that this, uh, this sort of top arrow, um, the shortcut arrow, that's indicating the, what we talked about in the previous paper with uh, uh, the max pool or the, the pooling indices. Is that, or is that just using this previous feature map and then concatenating it? No, it's I just guess. a copy and paste. It's like unit. Okay. When they upsample, do they do the, the index, like the pooling index, or do they do it by doing uh, like deconvolutions? No. no, they don't. They don't use that. Okay. They just use a deconvolution. Or this upsampling here is just a simple upsample. You just increase your resolution, copy and paste from the low resolution to the high resolution. Yeah, okay. So no, they are not using uh, the indices in this paper. But you could, after that concatenation, I guess, you could, like when you're... Because when they concatenate, that's still not the, the full resolution of the image. They still have to increase the resolution some after that, right? Yes. So you could use that, but they're okay. not. Okay. 